Management meeting. Today, we'll start with a program for cloud pledge enablement. And I create a blog okay, to help those people who have similar problems while creating cloud pages. And with this program, I will try to help you all to, with a step to step guide how to create a cloud page and how to capture the data and set up a data extensor. So you can see this series here in my linking I have posted here. Okay, if you scroll to my post and go to this particular introduction of the page in implement, you'll see the step, step guide. So we'll first run you to the first step of collecting the concerns using HTML forms in cloud pages. So let's click on this link. Uh, I'll also put this uh, blog description in the video later. So I created a form in the cloud page okay, where we are capturing the email address. We are capturing the full name, the address, address to city, zip code, and a checkbox to basically capture the email consent. You can also add phone consents, SMS consents, and the other consents if you want with the other checkboxes based on your own use cases. So the first step is for you to create a landing page. Okay, so you will go to your cloud page, create a landing page, and give the name as collect consents, or you can give your let's say any other name that you want. Give a unique site key and select the tenant endpoint for your Posting this cloud page from this drop down. And once we start, once we land to the cloud page, right? Marketing cloud by default adds on HTML tags with HTML body and head, I believe, right? Now, on top of it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the form tag into the HTML. Okay. So, Let's proceed this. So I added the form tag into my cloud page. Okay. Yeah, what I have, all this class I derive it from bootstrap. Okay. So if you want the bootstrap form, maybe you can go to bootstrap form. And here you can I think you can have a look of how they created it right so you can copy this form tags and then you can proceed with the class and CSS that you would require so coming back to the form in the form I have three attributes class action and the method two okay so in the action what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the action the URL where I want to redirect. So here I'm redirecting to the same page. Okay. So this is the when I publish the cloud page, okay, I can copy the URL and add it here. And the method will be post. After that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the form control. So here, if you see, here, let's go back here. You see, the first control is the email, right? So if I copy this and append it here, okay. So here, I added one label field for email, and I added an input field for capturing those email. Okay. So the input type will be email. Class is also definitely a form control. ID it will be input email. Okay. I'll keep the same name as input email to the name attribute as well. And the value for that input, I will always use a personalization of app script. So this will be a value field okay, for this input tag. Let's go to the next step. The next step. Is similarly, you can also add you now you have the what you have here is the full name. Right? 
So I can have the similar field. Say I copy this. I have the full code here. Okay, you can copy this. I'll go one by one. So here I can add another field. Say this one will be for full name. So I'm going to make it as full name. And this is full name. And then this will be text input the four name attribute will be the same here. Okay. And this is okay. And let's go down. I'll come to I'll come to this. Okay, why this is a game changer? We'll come to explain later why this is a game changer. So basically, for all the text, let me copy this from right. So my form is ready. So this one is for the email, okay. Mm, this one is for full name, this one's address, address to city, zip, and the email consent. <clears throat> now, if you see in these tags, you'll see the four attributes for the label and the ID and the name are the same. I'm also keeping the script variable the same. So if you see the input full name, this is the full name, this is the full input full name, input full name, right? And all these attributes are the same. So I just like to prefer the same nomenclature to be used for my forms. Similar with the in input email address. Okay. Yeah. So you have created your forms for your landing page. Now let's go to the fourth step. Okay, before going to fourth step, let's go to step three. Okay, so you created the form. Okay, you have now everything that is required for your landing pages. So in your landing pages, when you add this form tag okay, into your body and you publish it, once you publish it, you can come back and maybe if you haven't added the action item here, you can basically at the URL of your landing page here. Okay. So uh, I have a submit button here at the end. So whenever somebody submits this form, okay, it's going to redirect to the same page. If you don't even add this, it is going to the same page. But I follow the best practice of adding all the attributes that is required for a form. Hmm? Now, let's go to the fourth step. So for the fourth step, I created data extension. Okay. Look. <clears throat> hmm. So for all the attributes that I need to capture, I've added those attributes here, email, full name, address, address to city, zip, email consent, entry date, and the MID. You can also add audit blocks like created date, updated date. If you want the subscriber to update you know, their fields again, so audit log is one of the best practices that you should follow. Okay. So down. Okay. So coming to the interesting part is question uh, it. So and question it here. Okay. So I'm going to add this code into my head tag okay so i prefer to add this uh, adding this code snippet into my head tag of the html of my cloud page now what it does is whenever you submit the page okay, it is first going to assign the mid where you have hosted this cloud page okay? it is going to capture the mid and set it to the mid variable and 
it will going to capture the in, email full name address address to city zip and the consent okay. so here if you see i think i have added the required fields wherever it's required right if somebody comes and try to submit the page without email address is not going to be submitted it is a mandatory field okay. so what i'm going to do next is going to add this into my end script field and if we copy, copy the comments as well hmm. so when we created this this data extension we have named this data extension as master D. okay so i'm going to insert all these inputs okay, into the master D, D when somebody submits the form so this is my master D. Okay. before that i'm basically checking whether the subscriber has submitted the form uh, with the email address which is one of the mandatory field so when somebody first gets redirected and if this particular field is empty it's not going to insert but post the page whenever somebody submits the page it will be inserted right so basically this is more of a you can say the checking of the page is a post or a gate okay? and then i added all these attributes okay, with the key value here so Email with the answer variable, full name with the answer variable, address. So these are all our key value pairs that I've added. Okay? And in my data extension, I have only one primary key. So if I go back, now you see email address is the primary key. Okay? So that's why here I have one. If I'm keeping email address and the subscriber key, then it should be, I think it should be two. And you have to define which are the primary keys as well. Now, once this is submitted okay, and it's inserted to your data extension, here I'm using observed data. Most of people might miss using uh, observed DE. Observed DE is only for the email, okay? not to the landing page or SMS or push notification. So here in the cloud base, we have to use observed data. Okay. Here we have our clearly specified here in the comments as well what we have to do. Validate if the input are supplied okay, before saving it to the data extension. And we are using observed data from set for Anscape. Now the step by so step six, yeah. So we have published the page, run the page, fill the details. Okay, I filled my details here and I click submit. And once I click a submit, yeah, uh, I haven't showed you the code like how this is being displayed as a success message. We'll show it in another session how we have added this. Okay? So I think, yeah. Uh, we have done with the full step-by-step -step guide of how we capture the consent and add it to your data extension 